Here's your host, Alex Garrett. And a very good Sunday to you, wherever you are today. I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're doing well. And um, this is Caleb Brees, uh, Brassie, sorry, B-R-A-S-E-E, which uh, I might just subscribe to him on uh, YouTube. He's uh, got his instrumental version of Angels We Have Heard on High. And right now, our city is... I mean, 500 of our city residents are praying that the angels come down for Middle Collegiate Church, New York City. You heard yesterday that this historic church built in 19, oh, sorry, 1881 um, became, uh, went up in flames, its physical building. And actually, this building in uh, between East 6th and 7th Street on 2nd Avenue also has New York's Liberty Bell, a very historic church. And I actually am hoping to get someone on from this church to talk with us about how New York City can help. 500 plus people joined their chat in the community yesterday. To talk about memories at that church. And of course God is more than just in his house. And 500 people showed that yesterday. It's what comes out of that house. What that house means. What that house does for the city. For the community. And I want to read you right now. And I'm doing this early because they do. I want to let you know they have a service at 11.45 a.m. via Zoom. But here is what the Reverend Jackie Lewis said. We are devastated and gutted like our building is gutted. Our hearts are crushed like our doors are crushed. But we know how to be the church. And we know that God is yesterday. That God is God. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You should follow them at Middle Church. That's their Instagram. And uh, Jackie Lewis continued. We are devastated and crushed that our beloved physical sanctuary at Middle Collegiate Church has burned, and yet no fire can stop revolutionary love. We thank God that there has been no loss of life. We know that God does not cause these kinds of tragedies, but is present with us and to us as we grieve, pre present in the hugs and prayers of loved ones. They've been worshiping and doing ministry in digital spaces since March, and that's what they'll be doing today, praying for the first responders, the neighbors, also affected by this fire. And look, this is not an easy time to have a fire. This is the Christmas season. And, you know, one of the first churches I saw comment on this was St. John the Divine. And if you remember, their holiday season, their Christmas season, was interrupted by fire. In fact, the whole back of the church had to be redone at St. John the Divine. And actually, they're the same time frame. That the cornerstone of, of St. John the Divine was born and uh, was put down in 1881. And so obviously that connection and, and the fire aspect led them to reach out. And so this is inspiring me to reach out and say, yeah, middle church, you do have community. You have many people in New York and beyond that are praying for you today. And we do hope, and we do know, God is sending his angels on high to help you today. It's never easy to have this happen during at any time, especially during the holiday season. It's never fun to see your church uh, burning. And yet I think the aftermath of this will show that that community is strong no matter what. That through COVID, through everything the city's gone through this year, that the faith-based community is strong, that this community is strong. And we can only add to that community by saying we're here for them. At Alex Care Podcasting and Elsewhere. And it's not easy to ever say we're here for them because we don't know what they're really going through. 
We just hear the news reports. We just hear it and see the flames. But to see that they are having this constant flow of support is, is very inspiring. It does show that no matter the physical space, if you are a community spiritually, you can grow spiritually. If it's only based on, yeah, we have to go to church to, to build something, then what are we building? Because with the physical comes the spiritual nature of God. And that's, that is what I feel. That we can physically worship together or we can bond through the spiritual connection, even if we're not physically together right now. I hope that's what worshiping at home has done for people, as a matter of fact, that you can really connect with him from home. You can really connect with him when you when you sit down for a minute and think about him and connect with him, not just by reading, but by spiritually being in the mindset. He is mobile. I think it's important to remember that. He is extremely mobile. He comes to save a building from completely burning down. Like I believe he, he saved Notre Dame from completely burning down. How you say through the first responders that they're going to pray for today. Through neighbors that come out and support and fight the fire too. Worshipping in person is beautiful. And I really hope they can restore this church the best they can. It looks like a beautiful church. And I'm trying to think of a roll past it or not. Between 6th and 7th Street and 2nd Avenue. But when we can know that he is on the go for us, in and out of the church, that's even more special this holiday season, this Christmas time. He's on the go in hospitals. He's on the go in homes that are not well right now. I firmly believe that. And yes, his word is in the home now, I think more than ever, to be honest, because of worshiping at home. It's not just, okay, we read the hymnal today and we put it back for next week. It's, no, now we have the readings in our emails because of the virtual worshiping that... Uh, my church, we hawk and good shepherd Lutheran is done. We have them at our fingertips on the go. The Bible is on the go too, and that should set our hearts afire as well. A fire that yes, we we can still be with him, mobily. Uh, and virtually, too, I guess. And and actually, if you close your eyes and you're s sitting in front of them physically, too, in a, in a sense. But we tend to really pay attention to God when his house is burning. Or we can't get to his house, but we can do it from home. And maybe 2020 was the year we started to wake up and say, you know what? God, having that house of worship is beautiful. Having that history is beautiful. Having that physical being is beautiful. But having God at our fingertips even more so is so cool. Having God by our side as we go through this crisis is special. And you just know he's there. And so, of course, there are ways to do uh, middlechurch.org is, I believe, their website. And they are at 50 East 7th Street. 
Middle Church. And we can we can stand strong for them. And as they mourn the building and what it will not be anymore, I just say, you know what? God's on the go for you guys on East 7th Street. God's house is a starting point. But when you start to realize that there's a bigger, deeper component to him, to him not just being there when you go every Sunday, but to him being there every day. And the 500 people, I think, recognize that. We can sort of, I'd say, take comfort that he is sending his angels to fix this building. But he's also sending his angels to fix this spiritual component in the community now. To rebuild that, to, to keep strong that spiritual bond and spiritual base. That obviously has been there because 500 people or more were there. Now I firmly believe God's house does bring the spiritual community, the God, the faith-based community together. But I think 2020, in its hardest lessons, and any time we see a church aflame, it's a very hard and very sad and tragic lesson. But that's just his foundational place. How do we grow it? How do we strengthen it? It's not just by meeting every Sunday anymore. By truly feeling him by our side through thick, through thin, through upstanding buildings and through through the times when our, we've seen our buildings go up in, in flames or, or sadly come down after a terrorist attack. It's when he's there to get us through. That physical action. That physical trauma that COVID is. It means that yes, he's here for us at all times. And he will rebuild it for us. The rebuilding of that third temple is a real. And it feels more real every day. When you see God rebuilding our country. How does he do that, you ask? Well, he does his role in lowering the death rate here. He does his role in guiding our leadership the best he can. So whether we listen to him or not, that's the question. He rebuilds us through the strong will of our faith-based pastors and leadership and our small business owners that may be locked down but never out. They always find a way to survive these uh, the best they can. It's quite amazing. But for Middle Collegiate Church, the amazing thing now is that the communities come together. And we should all stand with them during this horrific time. And give them that courage that they can rebuild. And they will rebuild. And in the meantime... Building up the spiritual components just as much. You can check their Instagram at Middle Church for more on their Zooming. Their YouTube, they're going to have a live service at 11.45 a.m. Eastern. Well worth seeing and supporting today of all days. And thank God no lives were lost last night. And that building... A beautiful 1881 built building, church, I should say, will come back. 
and we will have him and his angels helping us through this today. Have a great day. Have a great Sunday. I hope to talk to you soon.